cameras. <laughs> if you, you call actually... me a bitch one more time, we're gonna have a serious problem. So let's be respectful. Yeah. Today, Catfish's Cammie and Neve are here to tell us about their brand new season. Former Real Housewife of Miami, Annie Kinkosis reveals how she grew her business on CNBC's The Profit. I'm a terrible housewife, so yeah. no, it didn't work for me. And Joss and Rogan from The Challenger spilling the tea on their MTV castmates. She was coming up to me trying to get me to vote you in at the very beginning. This is your reality check. Well, bok bok, bitch. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. I'm Darren Karp, and joining me are the hosts of MTV's Catfish, Neve Shulman and Cami Crawford. How are you guys? Buck, buck. You are not a bitch. I will say that. Thank, well, I can't tell. Let's see I how like it goes. I like to say I am that bitch. You are that bitch. Well, it's time <laughs> on our show. We have to start off with our top five, so let's get right into it. At number five. Brooks Likes shared another cryptic Instagram post weeks after a source told people that he and his wife, Julianne Huff, have been having problems. On Thursday, the NHL star shared a quote that reads, but first, happiness, which he called his new motto in the lengthy caption, which says in part, one of the most important things I've been looking at is how I spend my time every day. I'm redefining my priorities and putting happiness at the forefront. I mean, this is a good thing, right? Putting happiness at the forefront. I mean, you're going to agree with that? Need yeah. a lot to say here. Come on, Cammy. I agree with it, but I feel like there's a sub there. Like, oh, you is, think he was shady? There's always shade. Anytime you start going on Pinterest and looking up like quotes about happiness or like quotes about breakups, like live, laugh, love is like shady, shady as hell. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. At number four, who is that guy? <laughs> And Ant said is an open book when it comes to his feelings for his wife, Christina. And he's not afraid to let their friends and family know about his hopes for their future together. In an exclusive clip from Thursday's episode of Christina on the Coast, the father of three speaks his mind after crashing his wife's baby shower. When asked who was more likely to want another baby, the HTV star quickly raised his hand as Christina quickly says, not me. Are you guys, do you guys want children? Do you have children? What's your children's status? I have two. Okay, and you still, you like them? I love them. You want to keep them around? Yeah. You don't regret it at all? They're the, they're great roommates. <laughs> okay, they don't pay the bills, though. Can no. you... I have one, but he has four legs, and his name is Biggie Smalls, and he's a dog. Well, okay, that's a kid I can get down with. Yeah. yeah. At number three, <laughs> Sheena Shea is still on good terms with her ex-husband, Mike Shea, almost three years after their divorce was finalized. During Tuesday's episode of Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, the VPR star revealed that she kept in touch with Mike after the pair filed for divorce in 2016, saying, he's the only one I'm still in touch with. She went on to say that she thinks he's still finding himself, but is happy and doing well. Do you guys believe in being friends with your exes? Yes. I like, I try to stay lightly connected to all my exes. I try Gammy to stay as far away as possible. Hard pass, I'm really? a Scorpio, I don't do that. Once it's over, it's over. We don't, are you friends with all of your exes? All but one. Ooh, that's, that's the bad one. That's the, <laughs> well, we're gonna talk about that one later. <laughs> and you're friends with none of your exes? No, I mean, I wish them the best. Yeah, yeah, you're not like, you're not cursing them out every day. We just have nothing to discuss. Fair it's enough. Over. At number two. <laughs> After estranged friends and Real Housewives of New Jersey cast members, Teresa Judice and Caroline Manzo were spotted traveling to Los Angeles for an undisclosed project in December, people can now reveal exclusively that the two were filming an upcoming Super Bowl ad for Sabra Hummus. Though the reality stars are seated next to each other, it's hard to confirm whether a true reconciliation took place. I guess we have to tune into the Super Bowl to see what else is revealed. Are you guys Super Bowl fans? You don't seem like Housewives of New Jersey people. Oh, Neve, you do. <laughs> Neve is killing yeah, me with the, loves the housewives. With the content today. I love the housewives. I but love I think the it's housewives. you know I think it's time that we stop pigeonholing women into that role. I think that was a very wow. good feminist stance. We should come up with a new name for that show because they're more than just housewives. Not only are are they now people with jobs on a TV show, but they're also business women. I mean, let's let's none of them think, are actually the housewives. Yeah, let's definition. let's think outside the box. And a lot of them aren't even married, so. Cha-ching, and at number one, <laughs> the Australian Open isn't the only thing Serena Williams is slamming. She's also keeping a close eye on her fellow competitors and their outfits. The pro tennis player couldn't help but comment on one of her fellow athletes' clothing choices on the court earlier, commenting, is that mine? On Bulgarian player Grigor Dimitrov's navy tracksuit that he posted to his Instagram, while Dimitrov is no longer in the competition, fans can continue to look out for additional fun fashion choices as the tournament continues through February 2nd. I mean, normally I would say don't comment on people's outfits, but Serena Williams can do no wrong. Yeah, but was that, that actually 
look like it could have been hers. Oh, I mean, that's <laughs> her look. And no, she like, would have worn he, it better. Did, right, did he take that out of her bag in the locker room is what I want to <laughs> Do you remember when she wore that cat suit last year? Yes. Oh. Fire. Fire. Yeah, she, looked she looked amazing. Looked, looked well, so we good. have to go to break, but Neve and Cammie are sticking around, and they're going to take me catfishing. Don't go anywhere. Okay, you well, are here I'm talking to her. on our show with our <sighs> cameras. Okay. If you, you call actually... me a bitch one more time, we're gonna have a serious problem. So let's be respectful. Yeah. This bird wanna hop in Why this conversation. Be a bird? Well, bok bok, bitch. Welcome back. I'm here with my birds. Neve and Cammy are with me. You guys are my birds, right? I mean, we're good well, now. Well, see, that's what I thought. I didn't know. You didn't even know it was offensive. Bird was no. a mean thing. He was like, why are you so upset? I was like, Neve. Yeah, I, you could tell. It was like, you took a, you're like, hold on. Yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah. Turns out it's really good having Cammy around, basically to translate. Yes. <laughs> Everything. A lot of stuff that I Everything. hear on the show that I don't know what to make of. You don't know when people are insulting you. She I has don't even to be know. like, yeah. darling, come on, yeah. like get get it together. Well, let's get into catfish. Now that clip was from the premiere episode of season eight. Please tell me what was it like being there during that catfish confrontation? It seemed heavier than most. Catfrontation. Cat catfrontation. Yeah. Yes. Cat bite. What was it like for me? I mean, number one, it was hot outside. So I was already upset. Okay, yeah. Or um, a hot bird. Yes, yeah, exactly. Hot bird. <laughs> um, <sighs> Temperature and humidity plays a large role in this season because yes. Cammy's hair. That's, I'm, I'm always trying to talk to him about yeah, the hair. I I'm don't like, understand. it's raining. I can't film right, outside. Right. It's hot. My edges are sweating. I, just, oh, like, okay. I always say, like, just let your hair go natural. And no. She doesn't, I don't understand. Something don't understand. Max didn't necessarily right, exactly. deal with in the same we way. We never exactly. had to think yeah. about our hair. Right, exactly. Now it's totally different. Right. But I guess during that, I was thinking, I don't want to lose my job. Because it was the first week of us filming as me as right. the official cat, right. Catfish co-host. And I was like, they, this, they're trying me. They're You're trying. Meditating. They're testing it. They're testing it. <laughs> and I always like, and this was why I also liked having Max as a co-host, I always like when whoever's co-hosting with me is sort of on the offensive. Because then mm -hmm. I get to play like the good cop. Yeah. Peacemaker. Peacemaker, mm -hmm. which is fun for me because for a long, you know, for a lot of my life, I, I was always sort of the instigator. And so it's fun now for me to be the, the peacemaker. And, and no one's blaming you. Back, right. gets all the heat. Exactly. Yeah. I'm the help, you're the host. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. That's what she told me. Does anything surprise you anymore about people's reactions to being catfished? I, I mean, I think the reaction generally follows a similar structure. People are surprised, but very quickly they're confused and then disappointed. And you know, it's sort of like grieving. There's mm -hmm. five or seven stages that people go through, some quicker than others. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know, I feel like lately there's almost a little bit more of a, uh, I should have known. Yeah. People are, are, as much as they don't want to admit it and they're still holding on to the fairy tale relationship they've been having, they're very quick to accept that like, you know what, I, I probably should have known better. Fool me once yeah. right. for eight years online, right. you know. Right. Do you guys have security with you when you're yeah, there? Yeah, I do. But it, it doesn't usually get there. Right. Well, we did have our first like, did, yeah. confrontation Blowout. fight. The actual this fight. Oh. Like hands were thrown. And like security a, like, had to jump in. Well, I had to jump in He first. jumped in. Okay, if Neve's jumping in, I know. How, how crazy is the fight? It was, well, I mean, yeah. it was two guys. It was two guys. Oh, so I didn't get in there. there. Okay. Right. I had, no. You had to. Fresh you, manicure, no. You had your hair done. Come <laughs> right. on exactly. now. Yeah. Well, season eight, you guys are doing things a little differently, so let's watch this. This time around, we flipped the script. Now, I'm heading out with my co-host, Cammy. Who's ready to go fishing? We're helping people who need us the most. Let's do it! Only, they have no idea. Doesn't know I reached out to you guys. Oh my. So tell me about this. How did you guys come up with this idea, you know, and how has it affected the way you guys do the show? Well, before I forget, I, it occurred to me that we should prop we could call our show reality check and it would be very appropriate. Oh yeah. Actually, <laughs> we could probably call this show catfish. And it would be appropriate. You never know who I'm interviewing and I'm yeah. just going blind. Exactly. Um, no, the concept came to us. We didn't even really come up with it. I mean, we get so many emails and submissions through our, our web, we have a website through my email. And overwhelmingly, over the years, but especially more and more, 
it's people writing in for their friends or their right. sister or their mom. Oh, we got a lot of those. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. And we just yeah. realized like, wow, this is a theme that's just here. We should just, you know, kind of go with it. What do you think is a testament to Catfish's success? Because before this, we were kind of talking about like, how are people not learning? Like, I'm always still surprised that people can get catfish. Yeah. Uh, so it's been eight seasons. What's the key to success? I think at the end of the day, people just want to be loved. And sometimes it doesn't matter where that comes from. And yeah. sometimes, even if you know that there's something missing, people are okay with that because it means that they don't have to be as vulnerable about themselves. And then, you know, I think people just want to be loved no matter how they can get it. It doesn't really matter where it comes from. And losing that, like the idea of losing that by finding out the reality of the situation isn't worth it for a lot of people. So they just put it off for years. But also yeah. mostly me. Yeah. yeah. Mostly. The mostly star. me. Yeah. Uh, your co-host. <laughs> yeah. Man. That's how I'm saying it. <laughs> Last night's episode was interesting because the suspected catfish was claiming to be a long lost sister rather than a lover. And then at the face-to-face -face meetup, Neve had a bucket list moment. Let's watch. <laughs> Yeah, we can take a test. I'm ready. I would love to f to just get the answer to all this. I've been waiting eight seasons to do a DNA okay. test. Can we just go there? Is it open now? Yeah. It only took eight seasons. Are we going to see more DNA testing moving forward? You think? I hope not. Really? That I did not. I was trying to convince them not to go the whole time. We should just hit DNA test everyone. Just to we make should, sure. Like, or ancestry, so that. Because I bet you a lot of these people are probably related somehow. Oh, God. When we Terrifying. were all kind of related. Well, so right. this feels like, <laughs> you know, with at-home DNA tests like Ancestry.com, 23andMe, do you think there could be a spike in, you know, family member catfishing where people claim to be a relative? Mm. Oh. Or just more people kind of coming out of the woodwork. I mean, I get, because yeah. I did one of those. And yeah. once a month, I'll get a notification like, you have a third cousin. Mm -hmm. And I'll go in and my messages will say, hey, uh, my uncle was your grandfather's cousin. And I don't remember what to say to these people. Do so I mean, you think they just want to capitalize on your fame? I don't think so, because they are legitimately, like, they, they're saying real stuff. They know, like. Okay, they, they have, like, actual right, yeah. facts and receipts, yeah. as right. we say. Right, but if someone, like, if I found out I had a half-brother or sister that I didn't know about. No, and that's why I didn't want them to do that, because there was two chance, like, 50-50 right. chance. Yeah. And it's like, do you really want to know the truth? Like, sometimes ignorance is bliss, and you don't really yeah. need to Well, that's, what, that's why a lot box. of people stay in these relationships for so long. Mm -hmm. They don't want to know the answer. Mm -hmm. it's, they're happy with what they have. Mm -hmm. Why mess it up? Right. Right. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. Well, has being a part of the show made you more suspicious of, you know, new relationships and social media? Like, what have you learned? You both have children. I mean, would you let your <laughs> online date? She doesn't have I have a dog. Kid, kid. His dog. Right. <laughs> Dogs can online date. What are you talking about? Exactly. Uh, what have I learned? I mean, I don't. I think the big lesson, and it's funny, a lot of people at the end of the show, when they've had their heart broken in many cases, say, that's it, I'm finished, I'm never going to online mm -hmm. date again. Meanwhile. And that's not really true. Yeah, right. And that's not even the point. Uh, for me, the, the lesson is more in how we choose to look for love, and it has nothing to do with the technicality of it. It's how much are you willing to put yourself out there? How much are you willing to trust someone? How much respect are you, you know, willing to kind of forego in the way that someone treats you? Like, it's really just about learning how you want to be treated. Dig deeper. Right. Like, don't just look at the surface stuff. I no think surface that's, level that's trust. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And do you think that most people, after doing the show and seeing the one side of it where maybe you really want love and you want to be with someone, and the other side where it's like, you screwed me over three years ago, so I'm getting you back. Do you think mm -hmm. people are inherently good? I do. I feel like you're gonna say you no, do. No, no. See, he seems more skeptical, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I think people are inherently trustworthy. Okay. Despite, even, you know, a lot of people on the show say they have trust issues. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really sure if they know what that means. I, I certainly don't necessarily know what it means. But I think in a time where we live so publicly and everything is on display all the time, we're beginning to understand how much more we should value our own sort of personal space and privacy. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have any of that and you get lied to, obviously, you feel like extremely vulnerable. Anyway, I think, yeah, no, I think for sure people are good. They just get hurt and then they want to pass that pain on yeah. to someone yeah. else. Never send naked pics online is what we're basically trying God, to say. Especially not to strangers. Yeah, no. Strangers don't need don't to have your news. I, I don't even honest. agree with that. If it's a good pic, no. It's good lighting, right? No. 
<laughs> Send it. Who cares? <laughs> oh. Neve and Cammy, thank you so much for chatting with me. When have nudes ever really hurt someone's like the show's He's up. over? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Neve and Cammy, thank you so much for chatting with Send me today. You guys you. are the best. Send you nudes. two Send. will be taking you two will be taking a break, but rejoining me at the end of the show for a special history moment segment. I'm so excited for it. New episodes of Catfish air Wednesday nights at 8, 7 central on MTV. Up next, I'm chatting with two British bros from the challenge, Joss and Rogan. Stay tuned. This win was for more than me, it was for me and Joss. Team Jogan will never be broken. Welcome back to the show. With me now are the challenge's ultimate bromance, Joss and Rogan. How are you two? We're good. How are you? Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well. You know, you two are in Vegas right now. How is the city of Sin treating it. you boys? Oh, we love it. We're Sin sinning. Yeah. <laughs> We're sinners ourselves, so we fit in well here. Yeah. Don't I know that? Speaking of Vegas, I heard you guys will be performing at Chippendales this weekend. How exciting is that? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're actually we're here right now. Um, we're about to start rehearsals again. So, yeah, we're loving it. We've been working hard a week, and we can't wait to get on stage tomorrow night. How did this opportunity come about for you guys? How long have you known about it? I mean, not that long, really. I think it's because of being on the challenge. We've got a big U.S. following uh, now and then. I just opened a door in the US and we'd like to take our clothes off a lot anyway, so it kind of like fits the part. Yeah, we fit in well here, <laughs> that's for sure. That I do not doubt at all. Do they have a Chippendales <laughs> like in the UK? Um, yeah, there's one, it's called the Dream Boys. It's the, the main one in the UK, which we've both actually worked for in the past. So we've had plenty of practice and now we're, we're here to bring it over to the US. I mean, listen, I know you guys have a bromance, but who do you think the audience will like more between the two of you? <laughs> We've got better moves. We're both very different, you know. <laughs> uh, no, no former, I mean... Yeah, stop trying to split the Probably me. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Did you invite any of your challenge castmates to come support? Um, it's a good point. I mean, we did. We suppose, we suppose we've got Leroy people. that lives in we, Vegas, but I don't really think it's his thing. No, I don't know sure. uh, uh, Ashley, but she's away. Um, yeah. Well, we've got lots of friends coming. Um, yeah. Not sure if any challenge people will be there, but you never know. They might pop up and surprise us. Probably TJ. We could TJ. Get TJ, come, yeah. TJ on the blower. Yeah. I mean, he's he's the ultimate. Uh, Rogan, you didn't invite D to come see you perform. Oh Ooh. my gosh. No, we don't talk too much anymore. Actually, funnily enough. Oh, she nice. hates me still. I, yeah, I got to say, I don't necessarily blame her. We got to talk about the neither. past season of the challenge. <laughs> me neither. Both of you were huge competitors. Josh, you were considered one of the strongest players, but your time was cut short during the swimming challenge. Did you think that's how your season was going to end, or did you see yourself taking this whole way? No. Like, Lee, we had no doubt in our head. We were so confident mentally that we were going to go the full way, and I was literally I was gobsmacked. But it's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes in the challenge house, and we just got to take it on the chin. Do you regret teaming like, up with... My jaw was just dropped looking, yeah. <laughs> Do you regret teaming up with Kaylee? I mean, I know she was your good friend, but <laughs> not the strongest. Oh, yeah, now. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Figured. Uh, Rogan, what was your favorite moment from the season? Winning, surprisingly, <laughs> when, I, when I pulled up on that kayak and uh, TJ screamed, you've won a million dollars. That was pretty cool. Can't really compare much else to that. That was a, that was a beautiful feeling. This whole season kind of changed the game for me because I felt like it was a, it was alliances, but it was also numbers, and it didn't the UK and US didn't really matter at the end. It was all just who was on the alliance. So, do you guys think you made the right decision alliance wise during the seasons? I think yeah. I, I mean, I can't complain with what happened. There's people that are like uh, fans say you played the perfect game because you didn't go into elimination. Some say, oh, you're you're a wuss because you didn't go into elimination. So you, you can't please everyone. Um, but the fact that, you know, I walked away with court mill, I can't, you I can't, can't I can't you, have regrets. You can't play a perfect it. game. There's always going to be someone who's going to criticize you for not doing something or doing something that no one likes. You know, like it's really hard to actually play that game. But, oh, you, you did it pretty well. Yeah. Hard to, I mean, hard to complain with winning. You, 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 lost, really yeah, well. you lost on a, um, a purge. So in terms of gameplay, we did nothing wrong, so, in my opinion, and we, and we both would have gone to the final and won 
should Kaylee been able to swim? Yeah, like it was a curveball. Like if it was normal, I would have got into elimination and probably could want to come back. But like, like the, the game, the game's so like spontaneous and random. So. That's why we love it, yeah. Oh, well, that's why I love it, too. We reached out to the Twitterverse, and one user asks, Joss, do you regret sending Georgia in, unbeknownst to you, that you'd be purged out? Um, well, I didn't know I was going to get purged out at this point. I thought she was a great swimmer, but she was working against us the whole time. As much as you can deny it, she, she was, wasn't she? And I mean, she wasn't in our alliance. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So we're going to stick by our numbers, and we're going to get to the final that way. And had it not been for a perch, we both would have got there. So, and she might not necessarily like, mate. Oh, she was a good swimmer, but I don't, you, you can't you can't say because you don't know. But she was working against us, really. Even though she was on our team, she was on our alliance. So, do you guys think at the end of the day, it matters more about who was on your alliance versus like UK pride or USA pride? It was all about alliances and less about the where you're. Yeah, like, the, 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 there was there was obviously UK versus USA, but that didn't matter from day one. There's people cutting deals and yeah. You know, so like, if the US team won, they'd have to vote one of us to go in. But we'd have they'd be friends with us. They'd be on our alliance, so they wouldn't send us in. Like it's just yeah, it was it was, it was nuts. You'd be very simple-minded to think that if you just stick by your team, then you're gonna go far because. It's not how the game works. Well, it's stick by your country. That's what made it so That's intense. what makes the challenge, I mean, so incredible. You know, Rogan, you talked about loving that win this season, which absolutely deserved. But how does it feel to go from worst, where you got knocked out uh, very, very quickly on the first time around, to first? Yeah, it, you know what? It really took a toll on me losing um, in Vendettas, going down, especially the way I did. It was embarrassing. And, um, yeah, I can't lie, I was... I was gutted. I literally, really hard, really. I was having nightmares about it. And then, so to come back, I trained my butt off every day for like a good 18 months. And so, in my opinion, I got, I got what I deserved, if I do say so myself. I know you wanted Joss there in the final with you, but were you surprised D, C, T, and Jordan were the ones who got to the final with you? Um, well, Jordan was just a beast. There was no nice. way anyone was getting rid of him anytime soon. He's just an incredible phenom of an athlete. Yeah. Um, D, despite my hardest efforts, she got there and she proved everyone wrong, including myself. So she's an amazing girl, an amazing athlete. And, and, CT's uh, unstoppable. Yeah. And CT's just CT. He's, he's no matter how out of shape he claims to be, you will not stop that man. He's an absolute tank. He is a tank. You know, Rogan, you kind of mentioned before about how, you know, people are either going to call you a wuss or they're going to be happy with you playing a perfect game. In hindsight, though, do you think that not going into the proving ground is going to be worse for you off in the future? Do you wish maybe you had gone in once or twice just to kind of see what it was like? You, you wanted well, to sometimes, didn't you? I, there was, there was t times it wasn't shown where I, especially when Josh went against Bear, I told them to put me in. I, like, basically volunteered myself, and then they didn't, they didn't do it. They wanted to take a shot at the big guy. Um, so it wasn't like I was wussing out, which it got, a lot of people said, like, Kyle and Georgia are now like, oh, he's too scared. Or I wasn't. I was ready. Um, but, yeah, in terms of going forward, if if I get another chance at the challenge, I will – the first thing I'm going to do is go into elimination because uh, I'm, I'm – surprised. My ego's now, hurt. Yeah, it's a pride thing. I've already won now, so – if I get another chance, if I get another challenge, then people, people you'll see me on that. People that. say that as an excuse, though. Do you know what I mean? Because they were saying you need to go into elimination to prove yourself, but it's only because their alliance is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and they they couldn't control the voting system, basically. Right. So you think it was just sort of an excuse for them to say that and knock you guys yeah, out? Yeah, of course it was an excuse. Yeah. yeah. Um, who yeah. would you both not want to go into a hall brawl with? Because that hall brawl looks like the most intense of all the proving grounds. So who would you definitely not want to go against? CT? Him. Yeah. Well, see, yeah. No, CT, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't, we wouldn't want to go against each other. That would be... Right. You know, we'd probably just but, start hugging in the middle and then just <laughs> just see what happened. But, um, Do rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> yeah. But see, yeah, CT, obviously. Have you seen CT? He wouldn't even fit down there. He would just, like... Yeah, there would be no way. You can't. You, you, can't, can, you can't go around. You can't yes. go under him. You can't. He's you, fast you, as well. He'd probably eat you. Yeah. He's yeah. just a brick house. He's just no way. I thought it was going to be Kyle. We had Polly on here a few weeks ago, but he's. I thought it was going to be. I was. Not, I thought it was going to be Zach or Kyle, just because they're so tall and big, and they were like, no, no, no. No, I'd love to go yeah. against Kyle. I would smash Kyle to bits. <laughs> I'd like to go against Zach. I mean, Zach. He's, he's a lot tougher opponent. Than yeah, Kyle, oh, yeah, for sure. But, well, yeah. I got like to test us. I got to ask, will you two be on the new season? We kind of heard they started taping already. 
Oh, we're not allowed to. We're no. not allowed to divulge that information. Yeah. But hopefully, no, no, no. Hopefully. That's not. That might be the UK rules. But you're in the United States now. You can. You're supposed to tell us all uh -huh. the scoop. Uh -huh. Come on, we're that's how allowed. it works. I would get a smack bottom, and I've got to show this bottom off at Chippendale, so I can't. I can't say. We'll be getting smacked anyway. I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you might deserve a little smackdown from D, is all I'm saying, Rogan. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure, do you regret that? Like, looking back, do you think that you handled it poorly? Like, did you, sort of <laughs> after the season aired, did you apologize to her? I've apologized a million times. I'm a bit sick of apologizing, to be honest, because she wasn't a very good competitor. She passed out running around the pool. So I tried to do what was best for the team, send her in. You know, put my emotions aside. And in his but, defense, it was like, it wasn't purely, it's only because he was with her on the show that right. he got the brunt of it. It was like a team discussion. Well, she, yeah, had. she was in love with me, so it was she a was, bit me. Yeah. But, but it, it's, well, it's, it's business. It's part of the game. It's part of the game. I wasn't in love with her at the end of the day, and I, I'm, you know, I'm sorry about that, but you can't choose who you fall in love with. It's personal, it's not business. Well, do you guys have any advice for the new <laughs> rookies, whoever they may be? I mean, just, just strap up, because when you're a rookie, you have to go into a nation. It's like challenge rules. When you get oh, in the house, oh, you're a rookie, you're new, you're going in. That's what happens at the start. Yeah, well, yeah. And don't take it personally as well, because some of them like, like, feel like everyone's ganging up on them, but that's just like, it's like initiation. Yeah, there's Which, a... like, he, he didn't get, he just won instead. He's like, yeah. Well, yeah, no, well, I was going in, if you look, think back to the first week, I was going in to elimination on the on the um, War of the Worlds straight away. And I cut a deal with Jordan because I've got a good political game. So if I was, my advice to a rookie would be cut a deal straight away. Save your ass and stay in for as long as you can. Mm -hmm. Play smarter, not harder. And you harder. might end up winning. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Well, we have to go to break, but don't go anywhere. Joss and Rogan are sticking around to play a little game with us. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. I'm still here with Joss and Rogan from MTV's The Challenge, and they're going to play a little game with us. Are you ready, guys? So. All right. It's called Cast on Blast. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be more, more, more nerve-wracking, excuse me, than The Challenge, I'm sure. Here's how it works. I'm going to name some of your castmates, and I want you to tell me their biggest weakness. Do not hold back. I want all that bitchy oh, content, all right? Let's do it. All right, let's start off with bananas. <laughs> What's his biggest weakness? Uh, that he's old. He's <laughs> so old. He just gets tired all the time. He just wants to nap. Yeah, like, he doesn't yeah, he's... really do much. But <laughs> he's got he's got a lot of strength. But his got... biggest weakness is that he's he's getting old. He's, he's getting, getting old. He's got too much experience. <laughs> he's just like, come on, back in. And he's always the target because he's been on for so long that people just want to get him out of there. Yeah, people yeah. want to make a name for themselves by taking out the best ever. Right. Yeah. What about Bear? He just, he's, just, he's just mad. He's just lost all his marbles. Yeah, he's, he's, the, he's had he's, too many parties. Yeah. He, um, <laughs> his thing is that he's like, he's, he's actually a good competitor. People don't give him credit. But in terms of his gameplay, he he's, just... He's there for a good time. That's yeah, he can't hold back. He can't hold it in. He can't stop himself from saying things that are ultimately going to get him eliminated. Yeah. He definitely stirs up a lot of drama, I will say that. All right, what about Absolutely. what about Cara Maria, champ herself? Angriest woman on the planet. Just and yeah. I mean she yeah, she's she's, she's a nice girl, but I like she's got this legacy, but obviously we're from the UK. We we haven't seen much of the show celebrate. before, so we just turned up and I just thought she was pretty miserable. That's yeah, no, not angry, yeah, miserable. I'm very antisocial. Like on the show, like, you saw Jordan and Tori got engaged. She didn't even come out for that. Like, it wasn't, like, it wasn't nice. Do you like her and Polly's relationship? Like, do you get mm. why they're together? I, I think he got with her because, like, she was a, she's a great person to team up with on, on the show when you're doing a first season or something. You want to team up with, like, a strong competitor. And then I think it's just blossomed from there, really. Yeah, yeah. we like Polly. Yeah. Yeah, no, okay, but the car is just miserable. Do you think she's an overrated player? Uh, I, she's, no, it's she, hard to she's tell because beast. she's obviously got to all these finals and, and won so many times for being a beast. Um, she's so, yeah, no, I wouldn't say she was overrated at all. No, no. Just, uh, just, just from our experience, she's miserable. Yeah, just put a smile on. What about the beast, CT? 
his weakness. Smokes yeah. too much. <laughs> I mean, no, yeah, he, he hasn't got, he hasn't got he hasn't to stop him. Um, he's faultless, in my opinion. Wow. What's his weakness? That's a big thing to I'm say. Not, I mean... Yeah, I mean, maybe he's... You could say he's getting on a bit as well, like, but he st doesn't stop him doing anything, like... Even we'd be in the gym, on, like, running, and I could run for, like, for days, and he'd be just next to me, just chugging along. I'm like, dude, it's not a competition. Just leave it out. Well, we got to get to D, obviously, and I know, Rogan, you're sick of talking about it, but you and D were romantically involved during the season, but things turned sour during the reunion, and before we take a look at that clip, I just want to know what you think her weakness is. Her biggest weakness is me. Ooh. <laughs> well played, well played, but let's take nice. a look. Let's take a look at this clip from her. That's from Stan <laughs> so you gotta get I, that's horrible, though. I don't want to That sucks to say, like, honestly. That really sucks because, you know what? Like, I with you, I with you, and you said that to me. Like, that hurts, man. Where do you guys stand now? I've got to be honest, that's not nice to watch because, yeah, the, it, it is what it is. Um, we, we, don't, we don't talk. I think I'm blocked on all social medias. Um, yeah, she's... She... The, hard, the hardest thing is, though, is, like, because you're in a house in such close encounters, like, you take things so personally and emotionally, but at the end of the day, it is a game, and... I went in there to have fun, to, and you're, then you're to had a bit too well. much fun with her. Right. Uh, and and she, she fell in love, but I, I can't help... Can't help, can't help this. <laughs> can't help this? Voice. That's how I feel every day. All right, last to get, right. cast on blast. What about Georgia? Too loud, like she could give an aspirin a headache. Full horn of a voice. <laughs> yeah, well, you can hear her throughout the whole house. Yeah. She can't keep a secret because everyone can hear what she's saying, essentially. Yeah, and she yeah, she she, she does things like um, she like has a, a gratitude book, and so say for example, I mean, I'm Georgia, I'm writing in my gratitude book. I I sit next to Josh and I go. Dear God, I am so grateful for Joss. Joss is the best person. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah, I'm just re just like writing in my book. And it's just like, oh, I bet you're trying too hard all the time mm. to, uh, to please everyone. And it's, yeah, it's, it's cringe sometimes. Well, what about fellow finalist and champ Jordan? His uh, weakness. His weakness, yeah, he can't, he can't bite his tongue. Uh, like, he, uh, yeah. and he knows that. And he's an amazing player, but he just... Uh, he just can't bite his tongue. If someone's annoying him, he'll just tell him to <laughs> shut up. TJ, yeah. I'm talking with TJ yeah. at one point. He, he has to have the last word. But other than that, that guy's a beast. He is a beast. I mean, he talks the talk, but he can also walk the walk, so I'll give him credit no, for that. What about TJ. Kaylee? She oh, can't swim. She can't, <laughs> she can't swim. Too soon? Yeah, no, no, it's all right. <laughs> um, she, she loves drama so much as well, though, which is like, like a bit of a killer. Um, yeah, she brings that drama to our front doorstep quite a lot, doesn't she? Oh, yeah. What about Theo, the guy who probably went into, you know, the most, had to beat the most players this season? You're just too tall. Theo. <laughs> Theo. Yeah, um, no. He, again, like, he's got like Jordan, he just runs his mouth and he likes to tell everyone he's the best all the time. And fair enough, he's a great competitor, but people don't want to hear it. Um, sometimes you've got to stay humble. And he can't drink. Oh, yeah, for a big guy, he can't handle a Pinot Grigio. Uh, <laughs> Pinot Grigio? So, he's, he's drinking Pinot yeah. Grigio? He's trying and that failing. Is, that <laughs> is embarrassing. the best tea. All right, what about Wes? He tried to. Uh, he slid in so many people's DMs, and it was just obvious. And he thought he had the whole house figured out before he even went in. And even when we, he spoke to us on the first night, I was like, this guy's like... Just, just tried too just hard. Tried way but too it's hard. like he's too proud of his achievements. Fair enough if you're politic and you're doing it well, but you, like, need to tell everyone what you're doing. It's like that defeats the whole point. Then people know know your game and you're going to get you're gonna get caught up. Yeah. Do you think he's the smartest player? Yes. Wow. But, but his, again, sometimes he, try, he, he tries too hard with it. He wants everyone to know he's the smartest player, and it gets him in trouble. Yeah. All right. Last but not least, I got to ask about Pauly. <laughs> he's just crazy. He's he's um he's like he wants to be the Joker basically, like of Batman, and he literally his head works like that. He just loses his head sometimes. Like he's very unpredictable. Hey, great player, great politicker. Um, but yeah, just uh, just a bit cuckoo.
Yeah. Well, I imagine it's pretty easy to do that in the Challenge House. Josh Rogan, thank mm -hmm. you so much for chatting with me today. I can't wait for the new season of the Challenge to start, and good luck at Chippendales. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thanks, guys. Up next, it's Throwback Thursday, so we're going to have a cast from the past. Stay tuned. I got called to do Real Housewives of Miami. Don't hold that against me. So you were on Real Housewives of Miami? Yeah, How for two seasons? seasons. I'm a terrible housewife. Because to me, everything's attorney-client privilege, so I don't perpetuate rumors. So, yeah. no, it didn't work for me. Welcome back on the line now is a powerhouse of a woman. She was a former housewife of Miami, a lawyer, and she's the mastermind behind Skinny Latina, Anna Kinkosis. How are you, Anna? Hey, how are you? So good. nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. I have to ask right off the bat, you admitted to not being a good housewife, but is there any way you'd consider joining the franchise again, maybe in a different city? Uh, no. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Why? Wait, like... Do you have any uh, fond memories from it, at least? I don't have any terrible memories. I just don't think that I'm the right fit for that. I think it's a specific type of person, and I don't think I fit the mold very well. Just ask Andy. He'll tell you. <laughs> it's attorney-client privilege. I get it. He doesn't love me anymore. I don't know what happened, but we we had a little bit of a love affair before. Because Andy's a little bit of an intellectual snob. I don't know if you can admit to that. Oh. But he likes Smart people. That he d listen. I'm. I've been with him for ten years. Of course, he likes smart people. I understand yeah. that completely. Do you regret anything from the housewives at all? No. Good. No regrets. I have zero regrets. And if if I had to do it all over again, I would still do it. I just don't think I would do it again. You understand? Absolutely. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Absolutely. I just don't think it's for me. I don't it doesn't fit into my life right now. It takes a lot out of you. But I'm such a transparent person that that part wasn't hard. And I actually found it to be a really cathartic thing. And my daughters to this day said that it made the, the divorce, which should have been really traumatic, like something that they were able to work through a lot better because of the show. Wow. So, yeah, I have, I have good things. To, I don't have anything negative to say about it. I'm just saying that at this point in my life, I'm so busy that I just don't see how something like that, and for some reason Miami, I don't know what it is with Miami, but it seems to be kind of cursed. It's the most beautiful city, and yet a lot of the stuff that happens here never gets real traction. Well, let's hope the future for you gets more traction because you were recently on an episode of The Prophet where Marcus Limonis recently pushed you so you could take Skinny Latina to the next level, and I want to play a clip from the episode. Okay. The way that you invest, my understanding is that you invest in the process and the product and the people. It's a great product. What's my value, right? Are you asking me that? No, I know what it is. Well, what is it? It's, it's a lot more than $500,000. And that confidence is what I love about you. That confidence is what we all love about you, and I love that you know your worth, but at the beginning of this journey with Marcus, you had some concerns, and I want to play that as well. Do you feel like you chose this um, over yes, personal relationships? Yes, I'm going to be crazy cat lady. I'm going to have 15 cats, be in a ratty rat bathrobe, surrounded by my skinny Latina empire, you know. This is that important to you? Because I, I, I don't know. I just believe in it. Hey, nothing wrong with being a crazy cat lady, I will say. But <laughs> are you still as confident as ever about skinny Latina? Do you think the sacrifices that you have made have been worth it so far? 100% worth it. I have to tell you that, you know, perhaps somebody else that hasn't been married or hasn't had children, I've done all those things. I had a 23-year marriage that I, I don't feel that it failed. I feel that it ran its course. Another thing I don't regret, uh, my children are amazing. I, I, I feel like I almost should write a book about raising girls because I don't know if they turned out great because of me or in spite of me, but they're amazing. Um, and and now I can throw myself into this without feeling like I'm missing out on either relationships or children or giving anything up. I just, I love this process, all of it. Even the, the fact that there is uncertainty, even the fact that I don't know sometimes what's gonna happen. I'm kind of learning to relish in that. Well, I think it's a testament to your success. Actually, in the episode during the focus group, 
a lot of people saw a connection between Skinny Latina and Bethany's brand, Skinny Girl. Yeah. Did you model your brand after Bethany's in any way? Does it have anything to do with it whatsoever? No, well, no. No, I didn't model it after Bethany. The thing is that when I applied for the patent, what, okay, so initially when I made these sauces, they're healthier sauces with a Latin influence. And I could have called it healthy Latina, but that's not a sexy. There are so many products with the word skinny. Skinny was the mo most uh, trademarked word in 2013 when I filed for my patent. I have nothing but the utmost respect for Bethany. In fact, I read her books. I, I, I think that the fact that she started with nothing, I don't remember if she had 500 or $5,000 in a bank account when she started. And so her resilience, her perseverance is something that I love about her. And there are many other women who have been role models to me, and she has certainly been among them. But, but no, because girl and Latina aren't the same thing. Um, I don't do liquor, but when I started this, she was just doing her margaritas and her, so no, I, I'm, you know, food is my, my whole thing. So I'm sticking to, you know, sauces and marinades. And I consider myself a lot like the Pied Piper of cooking. I want people to kind of get in there and cook something and I want to make it easy for them. And that's my whole thing. That's what I want. I, I'm not thinking about, oh, I'm going to make a skinny Latina, I don't know, whatever, mojito or something like that is just, you know, it, it's not so, so no, I didn't pattern it after that, but the word skinny is, it sells, they're skinny pop, skinny cow, they're all great brands. Skinny does sell. I mean, it looks, the sauces look incredible. From the jump, Marcus knew you had a good product and your passion behind the business was there. I want to play another clip from the episode. Okay. I think Anna really proved herself. She needed the opportunity, but she also needed some tough love and some direction. I think this idea of her feeling like she was a victim turned into her feeling like she was a champion of her own product. And honestly, she I think she's a badass. I mean, what an awesome thing to say. What was the best part about this experience with Marcus? And do you think that his tough love paid off for you? Well, probably being called a badass by Marcus Lemonis on national TV has to be probably the top three best things about it, but tough love worked. Um, Marcus is, he's the real deal. And um, he did a really deep dive into my business and he knew what was right, what was wrong, what was wrong with me, you know, what he needed to fix. And I knew that there were things about me. I have this, this, you know, one of my big issues is that I think small. I, I'm afraid to think big. I think that women suffer from fear of success even more so than fear of failure, and I am certainly one of those. And so he helped me, is helping me still. I can't say that I'm there yet uh, because he's very hands-on and he he's still kind of nursing me through it. But that has been, it's been an eye-opening experience, really understanding that Skinny Latina can be really big and that it could be in every cupboard in America. I would say it because it's what I want, and of course I want to manifest that, but now I really believe it. Well, it's definitely going to be in every cabinet. All right, before we go, before we let you go, can you tell your viewers a little bit about Skinny Latina products and where we can try these delicious things? Okay, well, Skinny Latina is is really, it's like a magic sauce. Again, I would call it cooking courage in a bottle. It is basically the marinade, which is the flagship product. It is something that you can use on anything you cook, any protein, any vegetable, and you can use any uh, source of cooking, whether you use a Instapot, you use a slow cooker, you uh, you know grill, roast, braise, saute, it doesn't matter. It is going to make your cooking foolproof. And then the other sauces are meant to be used together with the original marinade or on their own, and they just give just a it just adds big, bold flavors without adding anything to your waistline. So, And we can all find these online or in stores? Find them online at skinnylatina.com or anacute.com. I'm at Whole Foods currently, at public stores, um, at Fresh Market, at Milam's, you know, and we're growing every day. So I expect to be, you know, everywhere soon. Well, That's the goal. Congratulations on all your success, and thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Best of luck with Skinny Latina. I cannot wait to try some. Say hi to Andy and tell him to get me back on Watch What Happens Live with Marcus. You got it. Can, you got it. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to unpack on there, you know.
Don't I know it? Don't I know it? Thanks again. I really appreciate it. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Watch The Prophet Tuesday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern on CNBC. We have to go to break, but when we come back, Neve and Cammie are back to wrap out the show with a wild moment from Catfish History. Stay tuned. Wow, what an incredible show. Guys, it's Throwback Thursday, so I had to bring back Neve and Cammie to watch this moment from reality history. I got butterflies in my stomach. In this 2014 episode of Catfish, Antoine is about to meet Tony face to face for the very first time after a three year telephone only relationship. It's been three years. I'm tired. And Antoine's cousin Carmen comes along for moral support, or so we think. The reason why you stupid idiot you can never find who Tony is because I'm Tony. Carmen stuns Antoine, revealing that she had been catfishing her cousin the entire time, and then goes on to explain her motivation. You should have never called me a fat ass Kelly Price. But the most chilling moment of all comes when she gives Neve and Max a taste of her Tony voice. What voice are you using to talk to him? The Tony voice. Carmen's cold catfish reveal is one of the great moments in reality history, but sadly it comes at the expense of Antoine's very real heartbreak. Don't talk to me ever no more, and I mean that I mean, you've transformed now. What do we think about this clip? We you brought Carmen. never call me a badass <laughs> Kelly Price. I mean, it's got to be the most, arguably, like, the best it's episode. That's my favorite. Yeah. It's All the best. All-time favorite. I love when he says, don't talk to me ever no more, and I mean that, because <laughs> I felt him. Well, Birds, thank you so much oh, for being with me today. Bark, that bark, was bark. amazing. Thank you. I really appreciate <laughs> it. That's our show today. Big thanks to Joss, Rogan, and Anna for joining me on the couch today. And, of course, I want to thank Neve and Cammie for being here as well. Reality Check streams Monday through Thursday on Twitter at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you're following at people so you don't miss a thing. I'm Darren Karp, and I'll check you next week.